So the title of the presentation is Contemporary Art and Expanded Printmaking. Wait, let me just move everything out of the way here because there's a lot of stuff here. Okay, are we good now? Yes, you can see yes. the screen? Yes, okay. we are. yes. And this is just a warning. This, is a, this presentation is in no way a historical or a contemporary survey on the topic of printmaking. It does not pretend to follow a temporal or geographic order. Context will not necessarily be given. Memory. Memory is a recording, storing, interpreting, and reproducing sign, code, information, and data. Memory is a trace recording, which we can only access backwards. Collective memory is externalized as archive, history, and culture. This is an image of a fragment of a clay tablet with an inscription, which is the Epic of Gilgamesh of the Neo-Assyrian period, seventh, seventh century before Christ, this is external memory as recorded knowledge, which I hope you can see the relation to the previous image. Matrix. What is a matrix? We can speak of a mathematical matrix, a genetic matrix, a sound matrix, an algorithmic matrix, a mold matrix, a graphic matrix, and others. The identity of the matrix is revealed in three factors. These are the function of the trace carrier, the function of the intermediate form, and the automatism of marking. André Bednarck. Here we can see an image from the film, The Matrix. There is a relation between the word matrix, the womb, and reproduction. In printmaking, images are reproduced. Here we see how in the, uh, in the film, also uh, reality is reproduced through code as a simulation. Abstraction today is no longer that of the map, the double, the mirror, or the concept. Simulation is no longer that of a territory, a referential being, or a substance. It is the generation by models of a real without origin or reality, a hyper real. The territory no longer precedes the map, nor survives it. John Baudrillard, the idea here is that the matrix is not a copy of the real. It is not the mold of a pre-existing reality, but can exist independent of it or even produce it, engender it. And uh, Baudrillard also refers to the idea that the distinction between simulation and reality is lost. This is an engraving by Albrecht Dürer, 
It's called it's Adam and Eve, the fall of man, 1504. And to give you a brief explanation of the technique, this is an engraving, which means this is not a drawing, but it is a drawing that is a transcribed or mediated through a copper plate, a piece of metal, a sheet of metal that is engraved or cut using a tool called a burin in this case, uh, which means that it is made of lines that are cut into the metal. Later, ink is pushed into the engraving, into the lines that are within the plate, and then pressed onto a paper with a printing, printing press. This is the process of reproduction of the image. So it is a technical image. There is a difference between original versus uh, reproduction. Here, it, the artist, when, when it is an original, the artist uses the medium as a way to produce an original. Initially, technical images were used only to reproduce originals. But once the artist begins to use the medium as a means of self-expression in itself, such as painting, then the multiple becomes an original. This is a later image <clears throat> by Rembrandt, 17th century, before Christ, uh, sorry, 17th century, after Christ. And this uh, image is really composed of uh, mixed processes, meaning that there are several tools that are used in the process. Not only does he use engraving using the Buren tool, but he also uses dry point, which is using a sharp point, uh, which penetrates the surface to a lesser degree, but leaves a burr, which is when the metal uh, opens up towards the surface. And this creates the atmospheric sensation, which you perceive. Also, he is using etching. Etching is the use of chemicals, specifically nitric acid, to bite into the metal, into the copper. So all of these processes are integrated into the plate. It was a, um, a kind of very experimental process. So you can see here, Rembrandt is a more interested in, in the um, expressionist aspect of the, of the printmaking process than in its uh, rep reproductibility. And <clears throat> he actually worked in different states. Uh, we can relate this to memory in the sense that the plate has a material memory of the incisions, of the engraving, of the, of the bite that is produced on it, of the trace. But also as Rembrandt continued to work on the plate, he records different states. That means he would rework the plate um, by even erasing, which means brushing out part of the metal and or darkening areas. So you can see the same image in different states. Each state is a different state of thought and a conscious decision. Printmaking as art practice and artistic production is not defined by technical processes as these can exist outside of the artistic sphere whether they be commercial, economic, or informational, for example. They have since, since its onset. These processes are in constant technological transformation. What defines or amplifies them has more to do with shifts in, con in context and ideas. This here is a work by Andy Warhol. And you can see how images from mass media, which are technical images, are here uh, reproduced or produced as uh, fine art images. Hence, the correlation be between the commercial use, 
the mass media use, and artistic production. This is an image of a rendering of the Johannes Gutenberg Press with movable type, 1440. And here, this is relevant because it also allowed for writing, for scripture to become mass, <clears throat> excuse me, mass media with a direct uh, relation to, uh, to knowledge and collective memory belonging to the public sphere or the public domain. This is an image of a rendering of a 3D printer, which continues to operate through a matrix, only in a uh, three-dimensional format. So the principle continues to be the same, even though technology continues to change. The use and the context is what will give it different connotations. Shifts in technology bring change in cultural production, as these technological shifts are also a reflection of culture. Old and new, hybridization of the analog and the dig digital, the sensual and the mental. So here we see, we can understand coding as analog versus digital. And in the analog, there is usually a one-to-one -one relation between what is recorded and what is reproduced. That is, there is a, a physical relation or a temporal relation between the recording and the print or the output. Whereas in the digital, there is an additional mediation through the matrix, which is the coding in which um, signs become actually signals or are deferred to signals, which only the computer interprets. That means which we cannot perceive This is a work by Alicia Candiani from Argentina. And what I wanna show here is how an image now can be combined using uh, both digital, digital technology and traditional pre-making processes. In this case, lithography and etching, which is a metal, uh, the, metal pre, the metal process described uh, as in Rembrandt, and also chincole, which is a, um, traditional technique of pasting uh, collaged images at the same time of the printmaking process. Here is an image by Paul Colvo from the UK. And again, expanding on, the, on this idea of hybridization. Now, because uh, drawing and photography and digital image are all combined in, or fused, merged into one language through a binary code and the pixel, uh, the distinction between them has blurred. Here, there is a process of mechanical reproduction that is the result of the halftone uh, print, which is actually produced in the computer and reproduced physically. History is not over, its wreckage keeps piling sky high. Moreover, digital technologies provide additional possibilities for the creative wrecking and degradation of almost anything. They multiply options for destruction, corruption, and debasement. They are great new tools for producing, cloning, and, co and copying historical debris. Hidus in this dystopic view, uh, Hito also reminds us that digital technology is not completely immaterial, but rather there is a debris 
that is both uh, virtual as it is physical. And this we can understand as, well, all the actual sites where uh, digital processes are produced, such as Silicon Valley and such, but also the leftover debris that it produces, such as the uh, toxic memory boards and such of the computers. And the actual impact on reality that uh, digital programming has, such as its uh, applications for war. Trace, record, imprint. Now these words can kind of be read interchangeably, although they each have their own implications. This work is by Paulina Velasquez from Costa Rica and Mexico. She recorded her fingerprints in different states. She has a kind of particular condition in which her prints continue to change over time. And she recorded them in different states, which means she scanned them. And later, using that digital image of the initial fingerprint, the digitus, uh, she created a laser cut, which is a machine operated form of, of, of printmaking onto a piece of cardboard. And she printed these different states. This is a work by Diego Gutierrez which has to do, um, well, it starts by looking at memes, memes from the computer, which are also part of our collective memory. And what he did is he transcribed them onto marble. Here there is a particular relation between this collective memory that is stored in the machine, in the virtual, and then becomes material in the most stable of uh, surfaces. So there is kind of a, a dialogue as to what is the, the stability of these images and information between the virtual and the material. This is a work by Javier Calvo from Costa Rica as well. And what you see here is a stenciled map of um, where you see the Americas. And what he did is he went out to the sun and using this stencil, he put it on his chest and allowed the sun to burn its imprint on his, on his chest. Later on, using his fingers as well, he would press down onto his chest in the area where Costa Rica is. And the result would be the erasure of that place or the blurring of it. And here there is also an interesting aspect which pressure usually what it does is to um, produce the image by pressing the ink against the paper in an analogous process. In this case, the pressure actually produces its erasure. and it deals with processes of visibility and invisibility. Space and sight. I wanna talk a little bit about how printmaking is incorporated into three-dimensional space, but also how it can, it can become part of a place and a public space. This is a work here by Sila Chanto, a printmaker. These images are made out of woodcut, which means they are carved onto wood, probably the oldest or one of the oldest techniques of printmaking developed in Asia. And what she does is to make them part of a space, a kind of labyrinth with also transparencies where these images overlap in different layers as shadows or silhouettes that also combine with the people walking through them.
A more recent image here of Carlos Jobet, also a Costa Rican artist, shows um, these woodcut, wood carved images of people and how are, they are taken out of their usual format and placed in other contexts as kind of entities in the world. Here, this is an installation view. And you can see how images become part of the space in which they are, as well as objects. Silk screen is used to actually print on the surface of the three-dimensional space. In this work by Thomas Kilper from the US, prints become site-specific in relation to the place where they are and how they are made and how they are displayed or presented. So process becomes one with the final display in site specificity. The, um, the artist begins by researching the site and its history, uh, the people associated or related to the space, which are represented in the print. Then he, he carves out the images of these people onto the floor onto the wooden structure. So he uses the actual architecture as a matrix. Later on, he prints out these images and displays them in the space. So it is also the site for exhibition as well as for execution in a direct relation to the context. The history of print is closely intertwined with that, with the history of public debate and ideas of shared or common public space. This is a work again by Sila Chanto, Costa Rican artist, which is called Historical Inversion. What she did was she looked at the plates in monuments in different cities including San Jose and the Cuenca Biennial in Ecuador. And what she did is she printed them as relief prints using a roller, inking the surface of the prints. Now what happens in uh, inking the surface of the, of the plates, of the memorial plates, what happens here is with printmaking, there is an inversion. So when you print, the image is like a mirror which taps onto the other surface, that way becoming inverted. That is, that is why you see the, the type coming on backwards. Inversion in Spanish has an additional meaning, which means investment. So here we see also that play of how a public space, right, is embedded with a public discourse of power and hegemony. These um, wheat pastes are done by the Gorilla Girls. And this is also a form of, uh, within the space, the realm of printmaking as they are prints. And here we can see how they speak about the inequality in terms of gender in public space as well, referring to museums. And how these museums exhibit more, much more the work of male artists versus the work of women. And these uh, gorilla girls also work in disguise with masks of gorillas, which is also kind of this anonymity uh, within the tradition of graffiti art, which also has a close link to uh, printmaking. Here, this is a work by Barbara Kruger which says your body is a battleground. There is a, a political connotation here, which also has a context specific, specificity as it is also uh, placed next to a pro-choice ad. And as mentioned before here in the quote, 
print is closely intertwined with the history of public debate and ideas of shared or common public space. Print as idea or a concept. This is a quote by Sol LeWitt, which says, the idea becomes a machine that makes art. This is also an interesting analogy with printmaking which is a mechanic or mechanized process, intermediated. So in a way, ideas always have to be um, <clears throat> perfunctory or predetermined in a way. In this work, which is an etching, it consists simply of vertical, horizontal, and diagonal lines in both directions. You can see that there is an exact correlation with language and what I just, uh, and the image that you see. So in this way, a concept can become a set of instructions or commands simply to be executed. The artist does not necessarily need to be the one to execute them, as in other works with Lewitz. So the artwork itself relies on language or the commands. In this work, we see here how this is in a way a reproduction of The Last Supper by uh, <clears throat> sorry, Leonardo da Vinci in the period of the Renaissance. And in this way, this work, which is not technically a form of uh, printmaking or a print, does have a lot to do with printmaking in the following ways. Well, it relates to printmaking's origins as a way of reproduction in the sense that we are uh, reproducing the work of an artist as they did in the Renaissance, not as an original work. And the work is made first by pixelating the image or dividing it into pixels. Then the artist looks for threads of string of different colors to match the individual pixels. And they are arranged to compose the image, which in this case is upside down because an acrylic ball reverses or inverts the image, functioning in a similar way to printmaking. Now we can also understand the pixel itself as a matrix or digital structure again, in which the perceptual image is deferred to the signals and the binary structure that composes it, which are not visible to ourselves, but that produce the sensual image. This here is another topic, which is circulation. Now this has been related to printmaking since its origin. Let me check the time here, okay. And I begin here with this image of Andy Warhol, again with the mass produced object, which is in itself related to printmaking, since it uh, begins from a mold. So mass produced commodities in themselves are also linked to this idea of the multiple, of the matrix. In this work by this Brazilian artist, uh, which is called in, uh, Ideological Insertions, he actually takes the objects, which are commodities, right, which are the, the Coke bottle itself, and inserts, <coughs> excuse me, texts such as this one, which is the place of the work of art. And then the commodity or the Coke bottle itself is put back into circulation into the market, let's say into the supermarket. So that way it is inserted back into the system. Here, also in, in this series of ideological insertions, he questions who killed a journalist during the Brazilian dictatorship 
and he prints it onto currency. Currency itself is a form of print, which is, which is uh, always in circulation. So in this way, the question is also put back into circulation, which was once also suppressed. It is also an alternative way to exhibiting in a museum <clears throat> and bringing the work to a public domain, which is not in a specific place. This work here, Transactions by Diego Gutierrez Valladares from Costa Rica again, shows how money, uh, in this case, he used a, a screen print uh, transparent base and ink that uh, is delayed in its action. And the ink is meant to obliterate the image, to destroy it, but it acts slowly. So once the, it reacts to light, so once the paper bill is taken out and exposed to light, the ink does not react automatically, but takes some time. In this way, Gutierrez uh, interacted in different, uh, different uh, commerce places and paid uh, for different commodities or products using these currencies, currencies which were made to self-destruct. They were also included, included in a biennial, in a contest where he made the jurors of the contest participate in this activity, destroying the bills without their knowledge. This here is a work by Sila Chanto, again. And in this work, <coughs> excuse me, she cuts out uh, pieces of a print and sells them by the kilo, kilogram. So here there is a reflection between the value of the work and its material properties. As if there were a correlation between these two things, an exact one-to-one -one correlation. And value was determined by its size or its weight. In this work by also Costa Rican artist Adrian Flores, he found different containers on the street and he cast, he cast them and used them as molds to create these shapes, which were later on exhibited in a museum. Participants could later on take them and leave them anywhere they wanted within the public space. So in this work, these works are also relational or interactive with the public. Now I will speak briefly of one of my projects, which I did in 2013. And I selected with this one within the context of circulation and as it relates, relates to currency and the relationship between aesthetic and economic value. So in, this, uh, in 2013, I did a project titled, It Takes Money to Make Money. And what I did is a crowdfunding strategy uh, online where uh, people gave me money. With this money, I went and did a residence in Argentina, in Proyecto Asin, where I produced my own currency, my own form of money. Here, what you see is the matrix of the, of the printed paper. And um, the money, for, for me, it was important for it to have a tactile, tactile or sensual sense, as well as mimicking kind of all the um, technological aspects of money-making, that is how to make it counterfeit proof, which also relates to printmaking and authenticity, the original. Um, also an interest here is how money or a piece of paper acquires value. Um, denomination is set, right? Arbitrarily kind of and fixed, uh, let's say for $300 or $125 and then it is set into motion. 
And I'm interested kind of in this, how it relates to the value of the artwork and how it operates. So it has a value which is simultaneously aesthetic and economic. Later, what I did is I gave the money back to all the participants in my own currency, in my own money. So if this person <clears throat> in Switzerland <clears throat> uh, donated or gave me uh, $50, I returned the $50 in my own currency. Later on, participants could also use this money in order to buy other artworks from myself. And I want to end this presentation showing here two more uh, traditional printmakers from an earlier generation in Costa Rica who were also my teachers. Here uh, on the left, we see the work by Rudy Espinosa, who is uh, traditionally known for working with metal and innovating with the medium. In this work, um, you see the technical aspects involve aqua tint, which is a form of uh, using resin to produce the texture or the grain that you see, as well as etching, and using the pressure of the printing press to produce the embossing, which is the kind of relief that you see on ink. In other works, you can see uh, much deeper uh, bites using the acid, also in conjunction with the use of viscosity, which is the separation of um, different consistencies or viscosity, viscosities of ink in order to separate different colors. In the work, in the self-portrait by Alberto Murillo, this is a lithography, which also operates by separating um, surfaces that are susceptible to um, oil-based ink versus water susceptible surf surfaces. So it's, it is the principle the chemical principle that water and, and oil do not mix. Uh, this is also part of a uh, research that the University of Costa Rica has done in order to explore um, non-toxic techniques in the form of printmaking and adapting lithographic uh, processes and other processes of uh, printmaking to uh, local uh, materials and technologies. So thank you very much. And I hope you have some questions. I'm happy to answer any questions that you have. Muchas gracias, don Mauricio. Si alguno tiene alguna consulta, ya sea que pueda este, dar la reacción levantando su manita o escribirnos en el chat o este, para habilitarle el micrófono. Eh, recuerden que este webinar eh, tiene este, evaluación para los estudiantes PIT y que estaremos compartiendo el enlace para que completen el formulario en unos minutos. Si tienen alguna consulta, pueden hacerla a don Mauricio en este momento. Ajá, Caleb, ¿tienes una consulta? Sí, eh, debería hacerlo en español o en inglés. Es in el en English preferred. Okay. Yes, please. <laughs> okay. Uh, was a really interesting uh, presentation, to be honest. I like so much art. Uh, my question is the next one. Uh, talking about Diego Gutierrez, marble memes, piece of art. Uh, in the beginning of the speech, you, to uh, you, you talk about original or a copy, right? So my question is, the marble memes it begins to a copy or that will turn to original yes that is a a very good question because in this case what is what is uh, printed on the surface of the marble which is with which is the material right the marmol right the marble um which is also this kind of pristine you know, a material used in, uh, in antiquity, right? Uh, here, uh, the images are taken, let's say from social media, Facebook and stuff like that, right? You know, they're funny images yeah, that are in, 
circulation, right? So um, it is kind of ironic that they are placed on this on this material that has this, you know, kind of majestic uh, uh, history, genealogy to it, right? And which uh, uh, has an ideal of uh, permanence. So we think of the, the digital digital images as being somehow now more permanent than the phys physical, what is physically engraved on a surface. But uh, in, now there is there are so many digital images circulating that we don't know that anymore. We maybe feel more, even more secure about a physical uh, material than than we would about uh, these these uh, ephemeral kind of uh, digital materials, which uh, which become kind of uh, irrelevant in the in the midst of all the debris, of all the garbage, uh, of all the uh, useless data data circulating, right? But to go back to your question. I think it has to do with the, the matrix, right? And the marble, the marble could function if it were to be inked, it could be physically reproduced. In, in that case, <clears throat> you could think of it as both the, the, the original uh, print, the original reproduction, or the matrix to produce uh, multiple originals. So I can say it's both of them. It's, you know, at the same time, it's original, but it's a copy at the same time. Uh, well, the, the work of art in itself is an original, mm -hmm. which is made of the appropriation of, of different images. The, the, um, the piece of stone in itself is the record of the printed image onto it but it could be inked as a mold in which case it would become a matrix to produce a originals as multiples there's a difference between the reproduction of an original uh, image and the reproduction of a copy in printmaking and this means and it goes back to the renaissance if there is a painting by let's say Michelangelo, right? Mm -hmm. And this image is uh, transcribed onto a copper plate to be printed. That is a reproduction of the painting. But if the etching, if the, if the copper plate is used as a medium in its own right to produce an original image, that is what you call an original, even though it exists, uh, it can exist as a multiple. So that is what you call a uh, multiple originals. Ah, that's a really interesting. Okay, thank you very much, Don Mauricio. Thank you, you're welcome. Perfecto, muchas gracias. En este momento, la profesora Cindy les compartió el enlace para los estudiantes que tienen que completar este, el formulario. Eh, recuerden que tienen 10 minutos solamente para completarlo. Tienen que completarlo eh, mientras estén en esta presentación, en esta sala, para que sea válido. Entonces, les agradecemos irlo completando. Si nadie más tiene alguna consulta, eh, pueden irlo completando. O si alguien más desea aprovechar a Mauricio, que lo tenemos por acá, pueden hacerle su, su preguntita. I have a question. Do you hear me? Ok. Hello, Mauricio. Hello. Uh, thank you. It was a very interesting and eye-opening presentation. I learned a lot. Thank you for that. I learned not only about techniques, but also about materials. I'm not familiar with this uh, area of expertise, so I found it very interesting. What, in your opinion, is the most, uh, we, uh, the weirdest, the most peculiar technique you have seen used in Costa Rica? Thank you. The weirdest that would be that would have to be the most uncommon technique. Well, you know, I am not really sure. That would mean that would be the technique that is most uh, singular, and it could be in terms of um, <clears throat> in Costa Rica, right? Because it could be in other places the technique is used, but not it, it here. Costa Rica, actually, anywhere, mm -hmm. just about. 
weird pe peculiar techniques. Thank you. Well, there's a, a peculiar process that is a, well, it's actually derived from a, a tradition of printing a dead animals or, or stamping vegetables and these types of things. And there was a, a work that was developed by uh, Jose Pablo Ureña in conjunction with uh, uh, Adrián Flores, which is called Materia Prima, which in, in which they, um, or actually I'm not sure if that's the title or a current response to another project, but there is a project in which they collaborated um, recording the degradation or the deterioration of the print of an onion, a cebolla, right? An onion, right? So it, it takes the different states as the, as the onion is rotting and it is printed on paper. So the mutation uh, as, the, as the onion is eroding, is degradating, is recorded onto paper. So yeah, there are, there are many, many ideas that can be worked. There is also a, currently a, an artist who is uh, working with um, living, um, living material or cellulose, right? Which you can also think uh, as a form of a matrix, right? The, even a genetic material is also a form of code, right? It's coded. And the way it, that it evolves and mutates is also the result or the product of, um, of its uh, genetic material. So I can think of those, uh, those examples right now out of the top of my head. Thank, thank you very much. You're welcome.